But don't use the sword, which is the word, against your brothers and sisters and cut them down. You're not helping them. Trust me, I learned that the hard way. Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Back with Emil. How you doing, Emil? Well, thanks. Good. That's good to have you back, man. We need a few more episodes of you. So that's pretty great. Um, in this episode, we want to talk about how we defend our faith. Yes. Right? And it's not only just the kind of the information, right? Mm. The what you give out, but also how you approach people, yep. um, in what spirit you do it, and so on. So I think that's important for us. Yeah. Some people don't believe in defending the faith. Yeah. Okay. Some people believe like, I'll just preach the gospel, right? Okay. Um, just say that Jesus died, was resurrected, and that's it. If people have questions, it's their own problem, right? Mm -hmm. But my duty is, is just to preach, right? Yeah. Preach the gospel. So we want to talk about why we don't agree with that, mm -hmm. right? And we, we believe that, as the Bible says, be ready to give an answer, right? Mm -hmm. For your faith, like it says in Peter. So where would you like to start this topic? I think maybe um, what what are we talking about when we say defending the faith? What what does that look like? As as like a something you'd ev like go through every day. Personally, personally, or even like for most Christians, what does that look like? To be honest with you, man, when it comes to defending the faith, I think I do more apologetics for myself mm. than for other people. Mm. So just. Kind of like, if I'm curious about something, I'm like, oh, okay, this might contradict something else, or this might not seem to be right. Then I get into it, right? To see, okay, what the answer is. Mm -hmm. So I kind of do that for myself as well. Got it. But then a lot of times I actually use apologetics. Surprisingly, it's inside the church, more than outside the church. Because, and, and, and this is amazing. Why? It's because Christians are actually interested in finding answers. Yeah. Right? Because, ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of people think like, are oh, you Christians? Um, you're just blind and you're indoctrinated. You you just believe what, what you, you know, what people told you. They, they're trying to scare you, right? They're telling you, you're going to go to hell and everyone's scared. So I'm just going to go to church. Mm -hmm. Like, no, no, no. Christians are encouraged to ask questions, right? And we want to know the answers. So to be honest with you, more I found it in the church than outside the church. Mm -hmm. I found people who are outside the church, they, <coughs> they might have questions, but I find that what stops them from coming to God it's more a life problem, all right? Could be a lifestyle, could be um, someone pass away and they feel like, well, if God exists, where was he? Yeah. And, and so on. The classic, if God is all powerful and all good, why does he allow evil to exist? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a good question. It is. It is. Yeah. So uh, you get that a lot, right? You, you get that perspective of, uh, if if God was really here, he would do things differently, right? Yeah. And normally they say that because they have a different perspective than God. Yeah. I say, that's okay. You have your perspective. But <clears throat> it doesn't mean that God doesn't have his own perspective. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that your perspective is right. Yeah, yeah. Your yeah. answer is right and God's not. So if God is all wise, <clears throat> and I'm not, I'm going to trust God on, yeah. on what I think is right. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely agree with that, 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 that thought process. Uh, it's logical. I mean, if God is all wise and all knowing, and he's all good, and he's all powerful, and he chooses not to um, act when there is uh, evil happening to me, Maybe they're, it's happening for a reason. Maybe there's a, a bigger picture that I'm not seeing because I'm incapable of seeing it. And that's the case. Sometimes it's 
it's not because God wanted it to happen that evil is but because we have that free will to do evil mm -hmm. that evil exists and because well there is evil in this world that sin entered the world and unfortunately now there is evil and there's death there's pain there's horrible things and uh it's not something that god did it's something that we do every day to each other we're the ones that hurt each other we're the ones that do these horrible things mm. god doesn't want that but we do it and he allows it because he doesn't want robots following him his orders doing everything he wants he wants his children's love because he is good yeah you know we came to that conclusion because we saw how good he is and how powerful and amazing he is and we saw that he is good and the world is evil and we chose good over evil right mm -hmm. so that to me would bring somebody more glory than their robots they were forced yeah and true that's what i see as a loving father you don't want your children being coerced and forced you want them to come to know you and to understand you and once they've matured to be like you know what now i get it now my father is is no longer some someone i'm disappointed in but now uh, now that i understand him and what he's going through i i, I want to be like my father mm. i want to you know make my father proud of me as much as i am proud of him and that's how my relationship with christ has been has been from being like a little child yelling like oh this is not fair you know <laughs> to understanding why bad things happen and coming to the logical conclusion and that that ultimately god is good and he knows better than me yeah. and than anyone um and please understand when we're talking about free will that's my personal beliefs um but yeah i know some christians have different beliefs and we respect you and we love you um but yeah however when it comes to defending faith our faith for me personally it's been with people that are outside of the church more than people inside the church i do have sometimes you know debates with people inside the church you know we have different views and whatever but ultimately i have the deep down i have the belief that if you believe in the triune god of the bible and he in you are you know um and that he is your lord and you are uh somebody that's submitted to him then you are saved and you're my brother in christ or my sister in christ and and i love you but we have difference of opinions and uh that's fine and but we still have a little arguments there here and there and uh, mm -hmm. sometimes it goes a little too far and i need a brother to check me and say hey come down <laughs> you know you're going too hard on that guy just relax <laughs> um but yeah and ultimately uh we have to always have that love and that grace and something that it's something that we build upon as we grow older and mature in christ i mean not physically yet. that's in a christ good, that's a good point you were sharing you're saying that like <clears throat> within christianity right we 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 do have our disagreements we do we discuss that yeah. but we still love each other absolutely why don't we take that perspective to the people that we're evangelizing to right we, we should because a lot of people think I'm going to learn a few answers to a few questions, you know, ap apologetics. I'm going to know a bit of my history and, and, and a bit of science to know what I'm talking about. And I'm just going to go there and kind of destroy, them. tear someone apart <laughs> yeah. and, and make sure that, you know, I'm going to win the argument. I've done that before. Yeah. I've, I've gotten to the point where I was, uh, I was talking to somebody that was uh, Muslim and we were having an i'd say more of an argument than a debate to be honest with you unfortunately and i i gave him so many facts that he it broke him like mm. his faith completely shattered and he no longer believed in any god and he didn't become a christian he just stopped being a muslim so i I didn't win any war or battle or anything. I just, I just lost the soul. Lost the soul. Mm. 
And yeah. yeah, yeah, you can say, oh, he was already lost to begin with, but that wasn't. If that was my intention was to stop somebody from being a Muslim, then what am I even doing this for? That's yeah. not the point. The point is, if you truly love somebody, then you want to bring them to safety. If you're just stopping them from believing what they believe in now, just for the simple um, fact that you want to win a, a debate or whatever you want to call it, then that's just pride. That's foolishness. Mm. Then how, like, uh, it just seems like, like this hubris, like, oh, I'm greater than them because I know more than them. It's, is that yeah. really what, what it's about? Is that what the message is about? Is that what the gospel is about? No. Um, like knowledge puffs up. Yeah. It's just, it's just like a prideful boast, boasting. Yeah. It's, it's nothing. It's just disgusting. And, and I wasn't proud of myself and, uh, it's again, we, we are all growing in, in grace and, mm. and well, and uh, love and yeah, humility. Yeah. I, I get that because it, it's actually very common. It's very it common is. in Christians that as, as Christians that w when you come into <clears throat> Christianity, you start to read your Bible, you start to see other people oppose your faith. Yeah. And then you go into your room and you do your studies and then you're like, okay, I'm going to come and smash this person, right? I'm going to, whatever points they have, I'm going to, you know, answer all their, their questions and I'm going to challenge their beliefs. But then with all that knowledge and without any love. character, love, maturity, you're just hurting people, right? Yeah. And then you come to that stage as you're growing in Christ, you're like, okay, wait, I've been doing it wrong. I thought I was serving Christ, you know, I was defending the faith, but I was just defending my pride. Mm -hmm. So you start to be more compassionate to people. You start to listen to people, right? Mm -hmm. And you start to find out that when, when you put your armor down and you're no longer pointing swords at each other, you're like, okay, now we can have a conversation. And that person is actually willing to listen now. Yeah. Before, I was just screaming. Oh, you're a sinner, you're this, you're and that, you're screaming that. At you. And they and either scream or they're like, oh, forget about it. Let's just walk away. Mm -hmm. But now, like, oh, I want to hear about Jesus. What do you have to say about Jesus? Because they're no longer seeing an enemy. They're seeing someone that's putting their hand out there saying, okay, this guy genuinely cares about me. He wants mm -hmm. to save me, All right? Changing my approach in, in, in defending the faith and evangelizing, like start, I started to see people have a different approach. Yeah. And they're like, oh, thanks. Thanks for caring about me, you know? I've noticed that too. Uh... I've been talking to some people in the church, different denominations. We disagree and I've changed the way I speak to everyone. Um, and I've changed in one way, which is I still say, like, for example, if somebody's saying something that's very wrong, mm. like, for example, Jesus and God, yeah, I still rebuke them, but I deal with love and patience. I do it with... A lot more of a more humility, more more understanding, more like a, pretty much like somebody that's talking to a child that's ignorant. Because most of the time it is from ignorance. Mm. I know you eventually you'd come across one person that's just arrogant and they just don't want to hear the truth. And for those people, I've learned just walk away, say no problem, we can agree to disagree. God bless you. Cool. And just like what Paul was saying in 1 Corinthians, he said that the, the message of the cross, the, the gospel, to, to the Jews and to the Greeks, something of foolishness, right? To all the but, believers, yeah. Yeah, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, right? Mm -hmm. for, for salvation. So... Sometimes in apologetics or by defending your faith, sometimes we, we're putting that burden on ourselves Yeah. <clears throat> that we think we can save a person. Yeah. We can't. 
No, it's not by our deeds. If anything, we're just planting a seed. Mm. What happens to that seed is entirely in the Holy Spirit's hand. Yeah, it's it's up to him what he wants to do with mm-hmm. with that seed. You know, um, sometimes falls on dry land. Sometimes, you know, the birds get at it. Yeah, you, you know, you, we just do our best. True, and, and I think that's where discernment comes in, right? Mm-hmm. Like with Jesus, he this he gave a parable of the shepherd leaving ninety nine to go for that one, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a pursuit there. But at the same time, there were people that were pursuing Jesus and Jesus walked away. It's like, um, <laughs> you just want me because I fed you, right? And I can't be with you guys. So <laughs> we need some um, discernment. Um, I'm starting to cough. Yeah. You were sick recently and you're still recovering. Still do. Yeah, still I am. See, we're doing the podcast. So giving 110%. That's right. Yeah. Um, no, I, I I think I've grown a lot. Um, you helped me a lot as well because uh, I talked to you about every... The, the only reason I helped you is because I just... The mistakes that you did, I've already made them. Yeah. So I'm like, just to save you time. Learn from me. <laughs> yeah, just to save you time. Yeah, yeah. It, it did. It did help. Uh, it helped me grow as a person. I think, I think even like in everyday life, uh, after that, I've changed. I feel like I've, the my mentality on on everything has been more mature. And 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 ultimately, if you're ever having a, an argument with somebody that's a Christian but of a different denomination or different belief than you, one thing I've come to understand, and one thing that I found very important, this is specifically for when you're uh, defending the faith from a Christian, <laughs> uh, you know, like let's say they have a, a belief that you find to be heretical, for example. Ultimately, the most important thing for Christians is this: it's the gospel. It's the main message that that you need to just fall back on, which is that Christ died. For our sins and through him through his blood on the cross we are saved it's not by anything else as long as you remember that main message and that the hope and the trust is in christ then everything else kind of seems less important it's don't get me wrong i'm not saying heresy is fine just leave it let it be and yeah of course truth you always want the truth to enrich the church and and for for the christians to abide in truth um but don't use the sword which is the word against your brothers and sisters and cut them down you're not helping them trust me i learned that the hard way (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's it's good to have discussions as christians right Within, within the church <clears throat> but you you're mentioning the the sword sometimes we think that we throw bible verses at people that we're doing someone a favor mm-hmm. and that's not really the case because mm-hmm. sometimes if you're not mature you're not handling the sword well yeah give us yeah. maybe a sword it's just going to be harmful to yourself yeah, and to everyone yeah. so i think it's something that it's it's dangerous. The word of God is in the hands of a child is dangerous. I think it's, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't read the Bible. I'm saying do not use it against people when you haven't matured as a Christian. It's, you know, try to be very humble and always have humility and love. That's the most important thing. Your knowledge in the Bible Ultimately, if you have every, like, even if you have all the knowledge in the world about all theology, all there is to know about theology, if you don't have love, we talked about this, it's pointless, it's useless. You have nothing. You have nothing. The most important thing to build up first in your life is your love. Once you have that established and you have that very strong, then even if you have barely trained with your sword, you know, that love will make it sharper than a thousand swords and will cut through the hardest of steel when i mean hearts 
part of Subhatu Qatrul because your love that's that's behind that it's it's the one that's from Christ. Yeah, and I, I'll cut that's, through any steel. That's a really good point because sometimes when people come to defend their faith, they feel like I need to know every answer to every question, and then I can defend the faith. Yeah, you're like no no, the Spirit will guide you. He's there to help you. Yeah, he'll cover for your blind spots, right? And there is humility in saying, I don't know, yeah. right? Sometimes you might come across someone that you're discussing and you're sharing Christ, and they might come up with a question. You don't need to make up an answer. Uh, or you don't need to say, oh, no, no, that's not a valid question. It's okay. You'll be like, oh, I've never thought about it. Um, I'll, I'll actually research it. And you know what? That humility, other people will appreciate in you. Yeah. So I think it's actually important that sometimes we think I'm going to defend the faith. So I'm going to watch like 10 to 20 hours of YouTube videos about apologetics. And that's great. It's good. That's good passion, right? But you're always going to come across something that you were not aware of, right? And it's okay to be humble about it and say, mm -hmm. I don't have the answer. That's right. I think people would appreciate it. Um, coming to the end of it. And we want to ask our viewers as well. Yeah. What was a question that you got approached with, if you remember that is, that you got approached with and you're like, wow, that's a tough question. Could be from an atheist or other religious groups. Mm. Would you remember a question that someone said, oh, if Christianity is real, then why this, 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 that I do example? Remember. I do remember the question. Go for it. And, um, and we want you guys to comment as you want to, me to what, ask the question. What now? question? Yeah, just okay. Um, I mean, you you obviously might have an answer to it now, but at the time, yeah, that was yeah, really tough. Um, it was basically the whole idea that God is the author of evil, and it was brought up like, well, if God allowed the tree of knowledge, knowing that they would fall, and even before that, Lucifer to be allowed to have the freedom to you know, be corrupted. Yeah. It's almost like the whole thing was set up for for humanity to eventually fall mm. and be in sin and depravity and need a savior. Um, so isn't that, wouldn't that make God the author of evil? Mm. And okay. I, I, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that kind of stumped me. Yeah. Very hard. Like that was very tough. It's interesting because a lot of questions that people ask are philosophical. It is a philosophical so, question. Yeah. Yeah. Those, are, those are my favorite questions, the philosophical ones. Cool. You know I love philosophy. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> well, let us know what you what a question that you came across could could have been years ago yeah. that someone asked you and like, wait, I don't know the answer to it. Or maybe has shaken your faith before, which obviously now maybe you know the answer to. So let us know and comment about that. Um any last words? I think it's um yeah, just have love. Cool. Yeah, uh, I think in defending the faith, um, as, as you guys have heard, it's not just about the information that you kind of insert into your mind and that you give to the to the person that you're speaking to, but it's also your character, your humility, yeah. your love, because they they are seeing more than just your words, right? And and don't be a salesperson, right? That's that's the worst thing you could do, you know. And also, just, don't be a doormat. We're not saying yeah. just lay over and let them walk all over you. No, like, you know, just be be very firm. By the same time, have love and patience. Like, if you get a, if you know you're right and you know for sure you're right, just don't don't do it in a way that's spiteful or angry or, you know, like wrong. Yeah. Just ha have that like part that's very. Do it with the attitude of yeah. Christ. Do it, yeah. Yeah, do it like Christ, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, we have a lot of examples in the book of Acts. Absolutely. Where Paul defends the faith. And we can see that he was very firm, okay. yet he was very gracious and loving. Yeah. So they don't contradict each other. They actually work with each other hand in hand. Yeah. So we just want to encourage you next time you share in Christ, and please do so. Next time you share Christ, um, your priority is for that person to receive Christ, mm -hmm. not just to win an argument. Yeah. 
Yeah. So that's that's our encouragement for you guys. Uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. Take care. See ya.